Hello grade tens and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to be looking at the midpoint theorem, which is an important part of Euclidean geometry. You learn it in grade 10 and then you use it, you apply it all the way up to metric. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now. I do math videos, I do science videos and a whole lot of helpful videos to make your schooling career as smooth and as easy as possible. Please give this video a thumbs up if this is a topic that you've been wanting to go over for a long time, if it's something that you need help with, and let's get right into the midpoint theorem. Let's start off with a good old triangle, and we're going to call this triangle over here, triangle A, B, C. Now, if I take this triangle and I locate the midpoint of line A, B, which would be somewhere around there, and then I locate the midpoints, so the middle of line AC, which is somewhere over there, and then I take a line, okay, another line, and I join or I connect those midpoints. This is what I get. Let's call that midpoint D, and let's call that midpoint E. Now remember, what I've done is I've located D as the midpoint of AB. That means that AD this length over there is equal to db, that length over there. E, remember, was the midpoint of line AC, which means that this length over here, AE, is equal to the length over here, EC, because that's what midpoint means. It means in the middle, which makes AD equal to db and AE equal to EC. Now, if you do that, what happens as a result of this is the following two really, really cool things. First of all, the line DE, so this line over here, will be parallel to BC, this line over here. And we know that we use these little arrows to indicate parallel. The second really, really cool thing that happens is that let's call BC X. The length of BC is X. What is also true now that we've located the midpoint of AB being D and AC being E and we've connected that with a line, what now happens as well is DE is half the length of BC. So I can represent DE by saying half X. So let's pretend BC was 20 centimeters long, DE would be 10 centimeters long. Let's say DE was 5 centimeters long. BC would be double that, okay? It would be 10 centimeters long. So I hope that makes sense. So what I've just shown you is what we call the midpoint theorem. And just to go over it again, if I have a triangle and I give you the midpoint of this side, so we know that that is equal to that, and I give you the midpoint of a second side, and I say that that is equal to that, the line that joins those two midpoints, what we can conclude about that line that joins those two midpoints is that it is parallel to the third side, the third side being this bottom side over here, and this line that joins those two midpoints is half the length of the third side. That is the midpoint theorem. So for example, if I give you something that looks like this, we can see that we've got triangle ABC, D is the midpoint over there, AD is equal to DB, and then E is the midpoint of the line AC, AE is equal to EC, then therefore we can say that DE is parallel to BC. Okay, that is because of the midpoint theorem. My reason for saying that DE is parallel to BC, my reason for that statement would be midpoint theorem. I can therefore also conclude that DE is equal to half of BC. It's half the length of BC. So therefore, DE, which is X, X would be half of 20, so X would be 10 centimeters or 10 units or whatever. And my reason again would be midpoint theorem. So you use the reason midpoint theorem when they give me the two midpoints of two lines. Now, there is another situation where we use a version of the midpoint theorem. If I give you the following, can you see that what I'm giving you now, what I'm starting you off with is different to my first scenario. So what I'm giving you here now is that AD is equal to db, or that d is the midpoint of ab. So I'm giving you one midpoint, but I'm also telling you that de is parallel to bc. So I'm giving you two bits of information, the midpoint of one line 
and I'm telling you that these two lines are parallel. So the line connecting this midpoint to the other side, and then the third line of the triangle, those two lines are parallel. What I can conclude from that is that AE is equal to EC. Okay, so this is basically the converse midpoint theorem. There is another reason that we refer to this by, and that is the one listed in the exam guidelines, and I'll go through it with you now, but I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between the information given. So this was my first scenario that I drew on the screen for you, and then we used the reason midpoint theorem. This was the second scenario that I just went over, and then our acceptable reason is some teachers use converse midpoint theorem, but other teachers use line through midpoint parallel to second side. And this reason, the line through midpoint parallel to second side, is the one officially listed in the grade 12 exam guidelines. This comes from there. So just to make this easier for you, I'm going to re-explain using the two scenarios. So when do I use midpoint theorem? And when do I use line through midpoint parallel to second side? It depends on the information given. So scenario number one, this is when you use straight up normal midpoint theorem. And it's when I give you D being the midpoint of AB. So I tell you those two lines are equal and E being the midpoint of AC. So I tell you those two lines are equal. So when the midpoint of both lines are given, if this is the case and I give you the midpoints of both, then we can conclude the following. Then, therefore, we can conclude that DE is parallel to BC and DE is half of BC. So because the midpoints of both were given, I can conclude that these lines are parallel and that DE is half of BC. So let's call BC X, DE will be half of X. So let's use yellow to indicate that this is the information that we can deduce or conclude based on the given in based on the given information. So because the midpoint of both were given, I can therefore say DE is parallel to BC and DE is half of BC. That's scenario number one where we use midpoint theorem. This is your reason, midpoint theorem. This is scenario number two. Can you see that over here, the given information is just that one of my midpoints is given. So over here, they're telling me D is the midpoint of AB. They show me these lines indicating that we've located the midpoint of AB, but they don't tell me that E is the midpoint of AC. But what they do tell me is that DE is parallel to BC. They give me the parallel lines. From this given information, we can make the following conclusion. We can therefore conclude that E is the midpoint of AC. So we can conclude from that given information that these two lines are equal. So AE and EC are equal and E is the midpoint. And we can conclude from that information that DE is half the length of BC. There we go. So let's do some practice questions and you can decide which reason to use. So in this question, they say in triangle VWX, VZ is equal to ZX. So they're telling me those two are equal. Therefore, Z is the midpoint of that line. And YZ is parallel to WX. So YZ is this line over here. And they say that it is parallel to WX. They tell me that YZ is 10 centimeters and VY is 5 centimeters. So VY is this one over here, is 5 centimeters. And the question wants me to calculate the length of WX, which is this bottom line over here, and YW. So YW is this one over here. Now, what are we given? We are given one midpoint. And we're given that YZ is parallel to WX. So this tells me that we are dealing with scenario number two, which is not midpoint theorem. It is the converse midpoint theorem or the line through midpoint parallel to second side. So how are we going to say this? Well, they want us to calculate the length of WX. Look at WX. WX is this bottom line. And what we know because of that theorem, the line through the midpoint parallel to second side, what we know is that WX will be twice the length 
of YZ. So WX will therefore be 20 centimeters. And my reason for that is line through midpoint parallel to second side. And what information were we given that allows me to com come to this conclusion? Well, we were given the information that VZ is equal to ZX. And we were given the information, and we were given the information that YZ is parallel to WX. That's how I know that it is line through midpoint parallel to second side because of those two bits of information. Okay, so we got WX, we said that that's 20 centimeters, awesome. Then they want me to calculate the length of YW. Now YW is this length over here. Now, remember we were given the midpoints of one of the sides. So we know that this side is equal to this side. We also know that that line's parallel to that line. And because of that, we can conclude that this line over here is equal to this line over here. So therefore we can conclude that YW, which is what the question wants, is also equal to five centimeters. And that's because Y is the midpoint of that line as well. We know that because of the same theorem, the line through the converse midpoint theorem, line through midpoint parallel to second side, and again, because of these given bits of information. And there's my reason, let's do another one. In this question, they say in triangle ABC, AD is equal to DB, so we know that these two lines are equal, and AE is equal to EC, so these two lines are equal. They also say that BC is 20 centimeters, and they tell me that angle B is equal to 20 degrees. They want the length of DE, so they want this length over here, that's my one question mark, and they want the size of angle E D A. We need to put a little angle sign over there. E D A. In other words, we want this angle over here. Right. Now, I hope that you can see that because of the information given, we're given the midpoints of two sides. We're given two midpoints. So we're going to use midpoint theorem over here. So what I can conclude from this is I can conclude that D E, D E is equal to half of B C. So DE is equal to 10 centimeters. And the reason that I know that is because of midpoint theorem. Now again, why am I using midpoint theorem? Because I'm given two midpoints, okay? I'm given midpoint over there and the midpoint over there. So I'm using straight up midpoint theorem. The information that I'm given is that AD is equal to DB. And I'm given the information AE is equal to EC. There we go. So therefore, I know that DE is half the length of BC. Then the other bit of information that I'm looking for, they tell me angle B is equal to 20 degrees. Let me fill that in again. That's that angle over there. Then they want to know the angle or the size of angle EDA. Okay, EDA. Remember that if we are looking for an angle, the one in the middle is going to be where the angle is. So EDA. So E, D, A, so we're looking for this angle over here, the size of that angle. And we know that the only other information that we're given is that angle B is equal to 20. So I hope you remember your fun angles. I hope that you know, you can see that these are corresponding angles over there. This is 20 degrees, this is 20 degrees, corresponding angles. Now. If you know your fun angles properly, you should be thinking, but ma'am, we can only use corresponding angles if I know that DE is parallel to BC. Remember, we need parallel lines in order to use fun angles. And then I can say to you, but yes, we do know that DE is parallel to BC. And how do we know that DE is parallel to BC? Well, because of the midpoint theorem. Remember, we just use the midpoint theorem in the previous question. The midpoint theorem says if I'm given the midpoints over here and the midpoint over here, so two midpoints, midpoint of two sides, then I know that DE is half the length of BC, which is the bit of information we use in the previous question. And then I also know that DE is parallel to BC. So we know that DE is parallel to BC because of the midpoint theorem and because we were given the following information, AD equal to DB 
and AE equal to EC. Okay, because of that information, we know we have midpoint theorem going on here. Therefore, we know that those two sides are parallel. Because we know those two sides are parallel, I'm using the F over there. I hope you can see. So I'm using corresponding angles. I, can you see I highlighted the F in purple? Which means that if angle B, this one over here is 20, it means that this one over here, angle EDA or ADE, however you want to call that angle, that is also 20. So angle EDA is equal to 20 degrees and your reason is corresponding angles corresponding angles and remember when you are using fun angles corresponding angles alternate angles criteria angles you need to mention which lines are parallel and that is de is parallel to bc but please grade tens remember 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 that they didn't give me this information they we didn't know when we started the question that de was parallel to bc we have to make a statement that says that they're parallel and you have to give me the reason and the reason is midpoint theorem so reason and statement is so 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 important in euclidean geometry I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more Euclidean geometry, more midpoint theorem videos, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.